back to my channel. My name is Anna, and today I'll be doing my family audio books. Let's get going. And so I feel so I feel like I have read plenty of audio books in like the short amount of time that we have in February, as it is the shortest month. But um, yeah, so let's get going. So my first one was the Keep of the of Night by Kylie Lee Baker, and this is where. We have Wen's quest to find a place where she belongs, and she grew up in London with a British Reaper father and a Japanese Shinigami mother. Wen has always felt when she and her younger brother Nevin flee London and head to Japan, Wen expected to finally feel like she belonged. When Wen discovers that she's also viewed as an outsider in Japan, she goes on a quest with Nevin and the outcast Shinigami. You know, to prove that she deserves a chance to, to serve the Japanese god of death, Izanami. I don't have too much to say about this book. I thought it was alright. I then gave it three stars. It was a little boring at first. So like the only, like the only thing that is cool is how they can manipulate things. The only cool thing about how much they can manipulate time and then, and then like the imagery by using the powers although I feel like the author couldn't done more um, built up for the world building especially with the races because there was actually a lot of races mentioned in the book so it'd be nice to know as to what races were those so then there was like but the question that comes to mind is like why are Reapers only white uh, so and then I wish that was kind of explained, but she didn't really touch bases on that. The world building, uh, there was also questions about the world building, like something that came to mind when the Reapers were like crawling through a tunnel. So like the protagonist, when she crawled through a tunnel to escape a group of Reapers. Spoilers, I forgot to say spoilers, so when men is crawling through a tunnel because she wants to escape from a group of Reapers but then like all of a sudden the Reapers suddenly have incredible healing and they were able to hear when where she was going so like I don't really understand that part I think the author should have touched more bases on that it kind of felt random to me but um I guess just that's just me so I also think that main character Ren is stupid at times. Sometimes she would make the shit decisions that wouldn't make sense at all. And then she like one of them was just, like she just fell in love with someone she just met, and then she left her brother alone. So like, isn't your brother more important than the stranger you just met? I guess not. Apparently, and especially because. Spoilers, in the end, about what happened with the lover, it wasn't even worth it in the end, so like, that just, I don't know, I don't understand her choices at times, so like, she only got hurt in the end, so I don't understand why couldn't she think logically at first. So, as always, in the end, she just paid her consequences in the end. So another one is, again, I don't have... I know, again, I don't have too much to talk about. This is Bands of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. I gave it three stars, and this is like the Remnant Chronicles or something like that. But well, apparently, you don't need to read those to be able to understand this book. I have not read Remnant Chronicles, so I guess I was kind of lost. My interesting perspective, I think you do need to read the Remnant Chronicles, otherwise, you'll be lost. But maybe they're just me, I don't know. But um, basically, this is like the duology and it takes place six years after the last book of the original trilogy. And we have a few of the characters are like following Jace, who is the, the new leader of the Balanger Empire. So, so, and then even nearby Kingdom Barrister, strength of his outlaw family, who have always governed by their own rules, but a new ever looms on the horizon set in motion by young queen, which makes her the target of the dynasty's resentment and anger. So again, I don't have too much to talk about. 
I thought it was okay, it wasn't bad, but I didn't really love it. I didn't give it 3 stars if I didn't mention that. And the majority of the book was romance. I got nothing wrong, but I I just have issues when the book is like heavily on and romance only. So I wish it would have like a balance of romance, action, whatever. But um, yeah, it was just romance all the way. I thought Cassie was a decent character and Jace was alright. I wish there was more into this world building since I, you know, since I didn't read the Remnant Chronicles, so I just wish like the author kind of hinted throughout the book of the world building, what is what and where is what and all that stuff. You know, just like a refresher, basically, especially, especially for new people who are coming into this series. So I wish she touched ba more bases on that. Um, but I don't think it's too long, you know, honestly. I don't think it's too long. Some things were dragging and some things just didn't really feel like it was necessary to be there. I like the plot twist. I thought that was interesting, but it did. It really took a while to even get to the plot twist. It was just dragging on and on and on. And it was like, are you finished yet? <laughs> like, I just wanted to end so bad. <laughs> so, and so, and yeah, then that's come to the pacing being boring and slow at times. But I do agree that the second half of the book got better, which is what I liked, but even then it still took forever to get things to what they needed to be done. I actually DNF this book because I was just so frustrated, which is that because I really wanted to love it, but I just felt so frustrated and this is Forging Silver into Stars by Virgin Camera, this is uh, I think that, yeah, we're following like Taiko, who is the King Korea, and arrives in a remote village in Briar Lock. He only wants to escape to the bands of his new life in the royal court, where magic reigns for the first time in ages. The last thing he expects is to fall in love with the handsome blacksmith with the bruised heart. So yeah, I did. I gave it two stars. I DNF'd at seventy six percent. So I was close to finishing it, but I'm like, you know what? Life is too short, I can't, I have other books to read. So yeah, so I didn't enjoy this book. I definitely thought it was boring, and as I said, it was frustrating, and I felt as though nothing was happening in the book. So Taika was interesting, which is why I, why I wanted to read this book, because of Taika. And I thought his story was also really interesting, but his character eventually became boring. I couldn't really care about what he did or why he's doing it, so I just couldn't really care about him anymore. Also, the pace of the story was also too slow, and there were scenes where, like, it was really the same over again, but just in different scenes, but, but like, at the same time, you have already read them, so it was kind of repetitive, so which I also didn't really like. So there was, like, this one scene with Tycho's path, and who had a same, who literally had the same scene, but happened in a different area. And so I really hated that part so much. I didn't, I didn't really like the repetitiveness of the book at all. Um, so it was like there was only like literally only two places in the book. It was either the forge or the bakery, and that's it. So like, so did the other places just not exist, or what happened to the other places? Because the forge, the forge and the bakery were like the two main locations of the book. So, um, yeah, that was really pointless and boring. And only because of Jackson Kalen, is that her name? Or something like that? Whatever. I did not like Alex, so he, I really couldn't care about him. Like, almost everything about him felt too forced. And the championship competition also fell out of the blue, which is weird because the whole point of that competition was to keep peace. But yet you're having a competition, so you can use that to keep peace. I don't really get how that works, but okay. So, also I would really want to see Grey. He's my favorite character, so I'm like, 
I was really excited to see Gray. So when I when we actually saw the scenes with the Gray, he was completely different person than the original trilogy we have, which I have read by the way. But like the the Gray in this book compared to the Gray in the original trilogy was so different. Like the one from the original Gray from the trilogy can actually kick his butt in this gray so like I don't know what happened between them between that person but gray has changed so much and so, so I think are you sure you're even the same person? like what happened to you? so and he does like sometimes exaggerate certain things which also I didn't really like because Again, in the original trilogy, that that same Grey did not exaggerate things. So I don't know why Bridget decided to change his character completely, because this was just not him at all. So um, yeah, so this really sucked. I didn't really want to love this book, but I just couldn't really care about any of it. This Anatomy by Dana Schwartz. I gave it a three stars. I was following. A young woman who wants to become a surgeon, but society and her family are not keen on it. So this was like the early 1800s, and you know how it is. So they don't want to see women succeed, even today actually. But anyways, so this is like a woman, fishes in a few and far between. She wants to be a surgeon, which was considered to be a very low skill. And so she meets a young man, a grave robber who sells corpses to the Anatomy Society where she wishes to study so that, you know, there's romance between the two, sparks are coming and they just become an, an unlikely allies even, you know, unlikely allies even though they have different positions in society so I thought it was not that, so I thought this was not that bad so I didn't feel like a romance, surprisingly so I thought it was cute um, it was gothic, but there was also like a lot of blood and dead bodies everywhere. So, which can be triggering for many people. So if you don't want to read this book, be careful. There is like really a lot of dead bodies and blood. So just be careful. You know who you are. So if you can read it, go ahead. Otherwise, don't read it. So I didn't like Hazel, but I didn't really like the romance between Jack and Hazel. The book was a bit slow, but I did like the great farming operation. I thought that was really interesting. So, I, and I also thought that was also well done, considering the situation those two had been in. So, but I don't think this book should should be marketed as romance though. Um, but I think the book should be marketed as romance because the moments was the majority of this book so maybe that's just me, I don't know but otherwise I did still like the mystery of the book but um, I'm not exactly sure how this goes but shouldn't, aren't you supposed to get a license to be able to operate? So, like Hazel was literally operating but she was doing it without a license so I'm not quite sure how it was back in the day but um, so that was kind of questionable about what she was doing because like I wanted she be in trouble if she had no license or something like that so I don't, so I don't know how that had worked uh, and the ending did kind of remind me of stalking Jack the Ripper so like almost this book it did almost gave me the feelings of Jack the Ripper stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco which I also loved so it did kind of gave me the same vibe um, and I still thought the ending was perfect I did really enjoy the ending I thought it was perfect for this book and for what it was uh, it went, like I just thought it was like just tied so beautifully I also really like how Hazel was independent and she just and you know she just broke the usual tradition by doing things what a girl shouldn't be doing but she did it anyway, so I thought that was really admirable from Haley, from Hazel's characters. So um, yeah, so I really did like it, and um, so I really did like this book. But um, 
I just think this book should be marketed as romance, but again, maybe that's just me. Next book is Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. I did not like this book at all, I gave it two stars, so we're following Thea Darcy, who is also known as Theo. She is the Princess of Astria, but when the Calavaxians attack Theo, who loses everything, her mother, Queen, the Queen, who is dead, and all the citizens of Astria are now slaves to the Calavaxians. And, you know, Theo was named the Ash Princess, and now is the captive in her palace. She has endured relentless abuse from the Kazuya and was portrayed as a weak, broken little girl, but after Kazuya makes her unthinkable act and she realizes that she must fight back for her kingdom and not just survive. So, I didn't really like this book. I'm not sure if I actually talked this book in my audiobook challenge. I did talk a few books in the audio challenge, so that's why I skipped those books from the here because I really touched bases on them but um, I'm pretty sure I didn't touch this book in the audiobook challenge but um, yeah I gave it two stars I did not like this book I thought it was boring and it was really predictable predictable wow I cannot talk today predictable oh my god anyways but um it was like really uh, like all the other YA fantasy I had ever read. It had the same plot, literally, so nothing new, to be honest. Um, I didn't really like how this book has so much info dumps, but there was just not enough explanations. She was just right, 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 but like, there was just no explanations as to why things were like that or why things were happening the way it was. There was just no, you know, there was just no answers for that. Um, so like one of them was like the spirit gems and how Theo knew about them, but like other people, like the Calavaxians who didn't know what they were, they only knew how to use the basics of that spirit gem, so like how to make warmth and beauty, um, so, but we still didn't know why the spirit gems were made and why would and why they were important, I, so I didn't really, so that part wasn't really explained at all, so how come Thea knew all of this, but the Calavaxians didn't knew, so that just didn't really make sense. Um, I also didn't really like the love triangle. <laughs> there was love triangles, which I hate. I hate love triangles. So I wasn't really interested as to who Theo chose, so I, I didn't really care about it. And I also didn't, so and you know, and Theo also made stupid decisions as well. So I still didn't understand why she didn't took a spirit gem. If they were, like basically, there were hundreds that were across the castle and she didn't took any of them. So why didn't you not take one for yourself? I don't know. But like, I swear, this is like the stupid reason, maybe for me, but I feel like this is like the stupidest reason, and it's because she didn't, the reason why she didn't take one of the spirit gems because she didn't want to anger the gods. Yeah. I don't know, to me, I feel like that's just a lazy explanation and just seems stupid overall. And she really just repeats the same thing over and over again, and like, Okay, we get it. You don't want to anger the gods. We get it. Stop repeating. So there was also like a lot of repetitive words throughout the books, like I smile, or you know when you when his lips pursed, you know that thing, <laughs> or like shaking the hands, things like that. There was, so there was like a lot of repetition of the same words, but um. Yeah, I mean, this book was just full of cl cliches and tropes, and yes, and I just really have read the same books all over again in this book, so there was just like nothing new in this book, unfortunately. And my last book, which I also didn't enjoy, is The Sun by Janella Angelis. So I actually DNF this book at 48 percent and. This is actually my second time reading it. I thought it was just me, so I thought I would reread it again, but as an audiobook this time, and 
I just could not, which is funny because the last time I read this book physically, so this was like a while back, I was actually this close to finishing it, but I'm like, you know what, I just can't, I have to stop reading, so. We are following Kali, who is working as a performer in a club, the Hellfire House, who is owned by a mysterious name, man named Jack, and she, but she has larger plans for herself, and she sets her sights on a magical competition being held in the nearby city of Glorian. So in order to enter, which is something what a woman normally wouldn't do, she must first bring three of Jack and the Hellfire House. What so? Well, that long. I mean, we got a magical competition, we got a Kali who wants to break free from the man. What went wrong? So, I'm, I'm glad you asked. So, yeah, I just stopped caring. Okay, bye, see you next time. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. I was really annoyed by like half of the book. I just, it just had way too much mystery. And I'm constantly asking why and why and why. <laughs> so being like just there was just too much mystery and it's like so it's just, so it's like I ain't gonna solve them or will more mystery come into play. So what's going on here? Um I didn't like Kelly, I know. I thought she was annoying and arrogant, she was supposed to be ambition and strong. But and then it came out that way, so I'm not really sure how there is room for her character and growth. But I do like the Marco. So I really did like the Marco, so um I thought he was really interesting and I did and I wish he was like the main character of the book instead of Kalia. I think he was though. Was he? Something like that. I kinda never feel if he was like a side character. But I really wish the the Monica was that main character. So like, and there were like some moments of the book where it was interesting, and that it had to do with like the min the minor characters being magically trapped within the town. So I wish there was more to it because that also sounded interesting. Like why were they trapped? What happened? You know things like that. And the world building wasn't quite there. So I'm still not, because I'm still not sure how it operates and like I feel like the book was like there was just no explanation of how certain things were being operated so how did the world operate I don't know it was never explained maybe it was but I missed it but otherwise I couldn't find an explanation to the world building so this book but like otherwise this book did have like a lot of fillers and honestly, I just couldn't find the plot of the book at all. And there was no magical competition. Well, there was, because the plot says there was a magical competition, but in the book, what is it? What happened to it? So, yeah, and we also never got an explanation as to why the city of Glovian was dangerous for the magicians. And so that was also really disappointing. But um, yeah, I just did not like this book at all. Okay, so that's all the family audiobooks I have read. And so please let me know what you have read in family. So please like, comment, and subscribe. So that you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!